But then the match that we've all been waiting for. So there was controversy on the internet last week. Liv Morgan and Natalia had a match at a house show somewhere. And the 15 second clip was going around. Liv Morgan hits her finish and pins Natalia. And Natalia immediately rolls up on her knees and points her finger at Liv. And I said, I can hear the words, that's the last f***ing job I'm going to do for you coming out of her mouth from the appearance of the body language. Apparently, it wasn't the last job she'd do for Liv Morgan. She did another one here, but there was consternation on the internet. Well, is this unprofessional? And I told a story about, you know, when I've seen guys the same thing, and somebody even tweeted a, a link to a match in Houston with Buddy Landell and Sonny King. And I retweeted that out and and said, you can tell that Buddy wanted to have this match about like he wanted to be circumcised with a bottle cap. And, you know, that sometimes things just don't work, right? But I figured, okay, I'm going to watch this match and see if they've got their problems smoothed out or if there's anything I could see that might lend some kind of understanding to what was going on between these two and this match pretty much told me everything i needed to know poor fucking natty if she's been having to do on the job training with this girl like this in every match they've had i can understand why one would lose one's patience what'd you think of the match <laughs> well I went into it with a little bit of a jaded view just from the glee you had when you told me to watch it. It was all right, but it's two people working two different ways completely. One is trying to work a match. One's a wrestler. And the other one has little movements that she's memorized that she does at different times. Sometimes they hit. Sometimes, I don't know what she was even trying to do at one point. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Natty Neidhart grew up around the wrestling business. She's got it in her blood. She's experienced. And I was looking at both of, not only the way they worked at each other, but what just both of them individually did. From the opening, Natty slapped her. And it was a perfect work and slap. She didn't take any liberties. Um, Natty's doing, a, she moves her weight around cause she's not a, a, a frail girl. She's got some weight to her, but she's an athlete. She moves it around smoothly, easily nip ups, up and overs. And she's got her basics down. Liv Morgan. She's, it, it, she was doing weak shoot offs. This girl is 40 pounds heavier than she is. And she'll just out of a headlock. She'll just fling her head in a direction expecting Natty to run 20 feet that way. There was at one point uh, she got kind of lived did semi lost on a drop kick spot, which ended up stiff. Yeah. She's laying those drop kicks in. Um, Liv Morgan tried to roll up and landed on her head, then got the second roll up when Natty kicked out. Liv rushed a drop kick while Natty was still getting up, and not only was she still on her knees, but she wasn't up on her knees and ready to take a shot in the chest, leaning backwards so she could brace herself. She was on her knees still getting up, and Liv rushed the drop kick and kicked her right in the tits and the gut, and Natty had to fall back and sell her face. And then uh, Natty tried to put Liv Morgan and a sharpshooter on the apron and Liv Morgan rushed a weak kickoff and Natty had to kind of half stagger back into the post herself. And then she did a perfect boomerang into the post to Liv Morgan. But then it, just all of this is like with the, the sharpshooter thing and the kickoff, it reminds me of a bobble that you see a lot of times when guys are trying to kick off out of the figure four. And it depends. Sometimes guys will do a figure four and the object is to try to spin into it as quickly and as smoothly as possible, right? And be impressive that you got it that fast. And then sometimes there's a reason you don't want to spin that fast. You want to pause a little bit. 
if you let's say you you can envision Flair with his opponent laying on his back and Flair's got the guy's right ankle in his left hand and he's saying now we go to school right so obviously when you've got the guy's right leg in your hand you take your right leg and you step over it and you're spinning to your left to go into the figure four when you go all the way around you bend the right leg behind your knee you throw your right leg over the top of that foot and you sit down on it you got your figure four but sometimes, and especially the old-timers would do this, and Flair would do it a lot, when he would step over the leg with his right leg, he would plant his right foot and pause for a second and then take the guy's leg and wrench it sideways and continue his spin to the left to put the figure four on. Not only did that make it look more violent with the movement he was making twisting the guy's leg, but it establishes that he pauses when he steps his right foot over. Because that's the point where if you're going to get kicked off out of the figure four, you get kicked off there. So sometimes you'll see guys that knew what they were doing, they'll spin into the figure four real smoothly and quickly if later on in the match they're going to be countered into a small package. Then there shouldn't be a pause. It should be quick, and the opponent getting the figure four applied to him took advantage of the guy's momentum to bring him on over in the small package. But if later on in the match you're going to try a figure four where the guy's going to put his foot on your ass and kick you off into the turnbuckle, you step over the leg and put the foot down and pause for a second and wrench the leg so everybody has in their mind when it gets foiled later that you do that pause naturally. You see the difference? Yeah. So... To get back to live, she's not waiting for any of these things. She's just doing it, whether the, the person is set for it or not. And that's timing, and that's experience, and that's getting a flow to your work that a lot of these younger people that don't have the repetitions, and I haven't been in the ring with a lot of experienced people, are not doing. But again, again Liv Morgan is 40 pounds lighter and she's working even. There's no extra oomph in her shoot-offs. She's rushing things. And her comeback in this match was seven windmill wild punches that Natty just covered up for and couldn't sell because they were coming everywhere and most of them weren't landing. And then three straight rapid-fire kicks before Natty could bump because she's got to do the, I'm going to kick you here, kick you there, kick you the other place thing. And then as Natty bumps into the ropes and she's hanging there on the ropes like for a position for a 619, here comes Liv Morgan again with that double-footed drop kick to the small of her back as she was leaning face first against the ropes. And then she pulls Natty out of the corner into an awkward small package variation because she didn't know how to do the small package and pulled her down on her head for a shoot. Then... They did a reverse shoot-off spot where Liv Morgan pirouetted going into the ropes because she wasn't sure if she was supposed to be running at that point and tried to hit some kind of move and missed it so bad that the announcers went, oh, because they didn't even know what it was. And then she tried to kick Natty off from that, and Natty had to stand up and get her feet under her and run in place. And then they did a spot where Natty put Liv Morgan up on the top turnbuckle and went for a superplex, and they're struggling to for the position, right? Like they were working. But then it looked like they changed their minds midway because Natty had already put Liv's legs on the outside of the buckle, and then they fiddle-fucked around for a minute, and then she turned around and put her legs back inside the buckle and had her drop down underneath her and pull her off the fucking turnbuckle. And I... I Finally, Natty hit a great power bomb, got an ankle lock. Liv Morgan rolled through. Natty went to the buckle. Liv hit some kind of move and hit her finish off the ropes and pinned Natty one, two, three. And I can fully see it being a struggle working with Liv Morgan now that I've paid attention. They certainly tried to play off the video that got out there. There was a lot of pointing earlier in the match. 
<laughs> the pointing was the best part because Liv Morgan can point. She just can't well, Natty have any did, contact. Natty does the pointing. I was surprised they did apron spots. What was that necessary here in this match? Uh, I'm just uh, so for all the people who were like, oh, you're giving Liv Morgan a, b a bad break here. You know, no, no. Natty was unprofessional. No. If anybody that knows what they're fucking doing had to work with somebody that was working like Liv Morgan was working like I saw in this match, after a week or two, they'd get fed up too, is all I can tell you. I'm sorry if that hurts anybody's feelings, but what do you want me to do, lie? 